Now we're going to assemble all the components used in order to do uh, sound recording with a boom microphone. So let's take a look at this here. This is a Rode Blimp with a 416 MKH microphone inside. And uh, the front twists off. The back also twists off. And um, this is part of the cable inside kit. You want to make sure that when you're putting the back on that this little piece is up top inside. And usually you just check to see that all the elastic bands are all connected. If they aren't, then the microphone can start to sort of rattle around inside. If you hear some rattling around, that's because it's popped out of the, um, out of the elastic bands. So um, once you've secured that, then we can put those on. These are often assembled when you come to the film class. But if it isn't, that's where it is. And then this can um, allow you to slide this pistol grip forward and backwards along the rail here. So it can slide along that rail and then tighten itself back up. There are two ways to uh, mount this. You can use um, a stand uh, like this or the, uh, the boom pole. I'll start with uh, the boom pole. And um, so the way this boom works, there is a uh, cable inside here. And so we would connect this to the boom and then we would connect our cable from the sound recorder into here. Now you always want to thread the boom on here first. And the reason for that is this cable otherwise is going to get spun around. Then I push the cable in and I try to listen for a click. And once it's clicked in, then we know that it is secure. Um, this lever here uh, can be loosened and then you position your microphone the way you want it and then you tighten it back up. Okay, now once we have that attached, um, you know, you can extend these locking rings and uh, that allows you to extend the boom to the, to the you know, required distance. The sound recorder, from the sound recorder, we're going to have our XLR cable here. We'll connect that. Again, you want to hear a click. And uh, at this point now, if this is our subject, then we can operate our boom uh, in order to record our sound. A few things about recording sound for this subject. Uh, number one, uh, this is what I consider the, the right distance, about 18 inches ideally from the mouth. Uh, and so if this was our subject here, then our microphone we would want somewhere around here. So around here. So some things to think about is where is the light coming? As you can see here, uh, if I'm right over top, I'm creating a shadow over top of the face. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but uh, we wouldn't want that. And um, there are a couple of different ways to, to handle the boom. One would be like this. What, what, we, what we don't like is this type of an operation where we're seeing this corner right here. Okay, uh, if you have to operate like that, then you want to be up top in order to get rid of that corner. You do what we call, a lot of times we call it Tuscan Raider, like <laughs> if you ever watch Star Wars, uh, that's what we call it, the Tuscan Raider there. And then we come in something like this, you know, 
uh, in order to get the right positioning. What you can also do is if you place this on your foot, on, your, on the ball of your um, shoe, uh, there's times where you can do something like that and then also you can use your pistol grip. Now when you're holding your boom like this, it's very useful to talk to, to uh, your first assistant camera or, or uh, someone in the camera department to figure out or to get your eyes on the monitor to see where exactly the boom goes into the shot. Once you know where the boom goes in the shot, you can look. I can sort of like look past, and right now it's just a green screen with nothing, but like let's say there was a window or a bookshelf, I could actually pick a point where if I'm coming down, I go, oh, there's the top of the bookshelf, and that's the top of the frame, then I just have to concentrate on keeping that mic above the top of the bookshelf, if there was a bookshelf in the background there. That's a, a good trick so that you don't always have to be asking people, am I in the shot, am I not in the shot? Now when you're holding like this, it's also not a bad idea to either, if you have eyes on the monitor, fine. If you don't have eyes on uh, the um, assistant director, who if they see you dipping in the shot, will be kind of going like this. We try not to say things like boom up, because that kind of ruins the take. You just kind of go like this, and just sort of raise the, the boom out of the shot. One of the things that uh, we use when we're operating in a uh, windy environment is a uh, windsock. And uh, so for the, the Rode microphone, it's the light gray windsock. But, uh, <clears throat> it slides on there with the pull string at the back, the drawstring at the back. You pull it over top and then tighten the drawstring around it. And don't forget to fluff it up. That's what's going to get rid of that wind noise. You don't want it matty, matted. You want it to be nice and, and fluffy. Then it's ready to to continue recording. So uh, this is the fish pull adapter for your boom pull. And um, you can put it on any 750 baby end. Uh, it, it's found in the sound bag. And um, that way you can be using your boom for a long time. And then if you, uh, if you find that we're doing a real wide shot with the master, and uh, maybe we don't want to hold it forever, then you can actually just drop this on a stand and, um, and it will hold itself there. And when you drop it in, the, the, uh, the front just gets buried and the back sort of grabs onto it. And that way, it's just a very quick kick and go. You, you can be back to booming and then onto a stand and there's no real adapt. Okay, the other way we use the uh, microphone for recording is uh, to use a boom stand. And um, this is our boom stand. In order to mount this, we uh, loosen off this just a little bit and then we slide it all the way to the top and then there's a trigger right in the front here. I just push it down and then it collapses. And we have our boom ready to be ready to have a microphone assembled onto it. This little piece here, this piece here threads in, it's a little adapter, it threads onto the bottom of the uh, microphone. And what I have found is putting this on, it is easier to mount the XLR from the sound recorder first and to hear the click and then from there um, mount it onto the stand. And then I tighten this in once it's fully mounted. And then we would run this cable as you put it around a few times so that it doesn't drop into the shot. Now, depending on how long you're going to extend, this is a counterbalance. And uh, when we're um, setting this up, you want the, the hook point for the counterbalance to be straight down. So watch how I do this. I just adjusted that so that hook 
and there's a little hole there that's going straight down and now I can con con connect that on. Okay, that allows me to cantilever out quite a bit further. Okay, I'll, I can take this stand out there and now I can extend this stand quite a bit further um, because of that cantilever. Okay, when you're getting to this kind of length, you're going to definitely want a sandbag um, straddle on there. So, and then we just leave it, lift it up out of the shot as needed, tilting down all those adjustments uh, as, as we see fit.